Anyways, hey guys, we're on the show. I can't tell who's on. I don't know what's going on with this screen. Uh, but I'm Pastor Pat Rang with my co-host and friend Mike Wood, Sr., the living legend, the know-it-all, the Bible master. Man, yeah. I'm pumping you up. Do you know you why? Did. There you go. Because we're pumped up over them uh, shakes you bought last night. That's, that's a lot of that's a lot of shakes. Last night, Mike brought to the Bible study a shake for me and my wife from Steak and Shake. And if you get them before what time, you get them half price. Yeah, two to four. Two to four, you get them half price. Did you know that? I hope you did. Because Mike said after that, you'd pay double. Absolutely. Manny Garcia, nice to have you on the show today. Thank you for being on the show. Please... Share the. We're doing what? Having a little bit of internet. We're having a little bit of internet issues. I'm trying to figure out if we're getting a new internet. Did you order us new internet, Mike? After the show. After the show. Yeah. Please share the show. Mike's trying to figure out if we're on. Mandy says we're on. Jan said she's going to go look. Mike, start us out with prayer. That'll get it going. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you today. Thank us for this wonderful, beautiful day. It's so nice out today. I hope we all get a chance to enjoy it. I ask that you protect everyone going to and from work and school. We also like to thank you for all you do in our lives, for your guidance, mm -hmm. for your wisdom. Now all we got to do is apply it. We ask you continue to bless half Bible church and all of those in it and jesus precious name amen amen hey we got a couple people on the show <coughs> let's see who they is jessica powell becca law hello to you uh jeanette atkinson is there on the go. show now we got some mandy garcia gloria lawrence let me stay with me guys i'm trying to get my dang screen fixed i'm i apologize i'm not as Internet savvy as Mike Sr. is. I can tell you that. Um, talking about family one more time. Talking about prepping your family for the days ahead. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's. I, I need to show you a video. I wanted to tell you this because I'm, I'm hoping I can show it at church. There was a guy, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys might have seen the video, who was calling down a curse on the nation of Israel. And the guy died right in the middle of the speech. Um, and so when we get into the Deuteronomy six, people need to know you don't you don't mess with Israel and you don't you don't you know you you bless Israel and, and you'll be blessed. Hi Junior Evans, hi Roxanne Galati, good morning to you. Mike, thank you for putting up the backdrop. That looks beautiful. Praise you, Lord. All right, guys, we're going to get into our prayer list. Send them up if you have them. We are headed to the, let's see, we're not headed to the tomb. We're headed to the cross. Mm -hmm. What do we think? We're four weeks away? Yes, we are. About four weeks away. What is the date today? 21? Yes. 21. <coughs> let's see. Does oh, that sound wow. right? 21. Yes, it does. All right, send up your prayers. Me and Mike got an exhausted list. Send up your prayers. We'd love to have them. I would love to answer them. Be obedient. Dot Morris is on the show. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Hey, what are you going to do in the sunshine? You going to turn over your garden? Uh, it's too early yet, I think, isn't it? Guys, it's time to get ready for the... Did you guys go out early this morning like I did? I didn't go out too early. I gotta, I'm not going to lie to you. My wife got up before I did and let the dogs out, and I finally... I got up at 5, then I went back to bed for a minute. Man, don't do that. You go back to bed, and you end up an hour later. You know, I, this alarm set for 6.15. That's and, too late for me. Uh, Hi, Vicki Rankin. Wednesdays only. And that's the only day the alarm goes off at my house. Yeah, so 
anyways, yeah, she she uh, got there before I did. She was up before I did. That's uh, I'm usually we usually get up. I start moving around at five. Usually get up five thirty or six. And by six, that's that's too late after that. Anything after six is way too late for me. Well, Vic, but yeah. hopefully you guys are doing well today. We're gonna go through our prayer list. Please send yours up. Don't forget we're headed to Resurrection Sunday. Don't forget mm -hmm. that this is the last uh, sermon on the preaching series of wow. uh, New Year, New Plan. It looks like we're getting some new internet. Jan's getting ready to set us up with some new internet. Why? It's not working well? It's, we're going we're gonna to buffet my phone because it's, uh, it's asking. Buffeting. Mm -hmm. Is it buffeting for you guys? Buffering. Yes, it is. Well, we got some people on there. We got people on there. So let's do let's do our prayer list real quick, guys. And Janet's getting us some different style of internet. All right, prayers for. Um, I can't, she didn't leave her name, but she said her son. Uh, so that was our first prayer request on our prayer wall. And you guys know you can get to the Have Bible page through HBWT. Uh, dot org prayer wall. Dan Gedemeyer, praying for him. Crystal Waymeyer, we're praying for you. Hope you're watching the show today. God bless you and your family. Uh, also praying for Franny Berger and her family with the loss of her mom. Uh, Slingshot Van Griff, we're lifting you up, brother. Praying for you. Donna and Angela Madelone. And I'm trying to think of what Donna's name is. Mike, and you didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Angela Madelone's mom's name is Donna. I know it begins with a G. Anyways, Donna, we love you, and we hope you're doing well. Praying for Molly. Praying for Danielle Spears. Uh, I'm praying for Taylor and Keelan this morning uh, as they are house hunting. Donna Shadrowski's son, praying for you, Christy, and her family. Pastor Kyle Rainbow down in, excuse me, guys, Texas. Uh, John Cordick and his granddaughter, uh, Yo Hung Shin, we're praying for you, uh, my dear friend, and your prayer requests. I see that on the prayer wall. Sarah Getz is praying for a co-worker, Michelle Marie Conley. Maria Conley is praying for, uh, she needs some healing in some, some areas of her life. Uh, praying for all our new members. Mm. And you know there was like 11 that just joined. Uh, Praise the Lord for that. Yeah, we praying need new members and kids yeah and kids uh praying for cindy ford uh she has a prayer request for vicky and actually cindy has a couple out there so cindy i apologize uh if i didn't mention all of them but i know you have a couple out there magda and david for their children and nicole coffin uh and one more for my friend gh uh we're praying for him as well mike do you have anything else on your prayer list as I scan well, our board? Paul, uh, let's see. Saying hello to Paul Hall, Jessica Powell. Her mom's having brain tumor removed Friday. Oh, my goodness. We'll pray for her. Jody George, uh, thank you for being on the show. Praying for Shannon Moody. Um, Mandy Garcia, yes, she said it's working good. Laura Healy, or Laura Wyatt. Uh, praying for you. Good morning to you and your hubby, Greg. Linda Harden, praying for you. God bless you. Chad Davis for continued healing. Yes, I am. Story of my life. Uh, Don Shadrowski, good morning. We got your prayer. Jeannie Lauber, got your prayer and looking forward to meeting your neighbors, I think, next week. Bill and Debbie Jeffries, you're in our prayers. Uh, Chuck Sherbring as well. Roxanne Galati, praying for you and your family. Uh, la, 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 la. looks like our Molly Trot. Nice to see you on the show today, Donna Spangler, Jeanette Atkinson, Felicia Dennis. Good morning to you, Deanna Fletcher. Oh wow, Becca Law, Heather Tabers, Caitlin Scrimmer. Good morning to you and your family. We pray for you. Pray for my wife. And I got a funny. Remind me, Vicky can put up a funny here in a minute. Uh, the moon was beautiful. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Mike prayed up. We got to go. Dear Heavenly Father, well, what a glorious day we oh, have. Lord. We just want to thank you for everything. I mean, we can't thank you enough for, for all you continue to do in our lives. We'd like to thank you for your answered prayers. I'd like to ask for 
healing, guidance, protection, and love for all those listening out there and for their families. We ask you continue to protect them, keep them safe, and uh, let us get to know you better. Mm. We uh, love you, and we just uh, ask for your blessings, and you know what we all need, and uh, we need to love you more. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Great prayer. Thank you. Let's see. Jody George says, me and Tom need prayers concerning this house, please. Lord, we just pray for Jody George with her house and anything's going on with it. And uh, just, Lord, all those who are coming on the show, just pray for their families as we get ready. In thy name, amen. amen. Hey, guys, we're prepping for your family. So we call it pre-family prep coming this weekend. And then we'll move straight into resurrection. Uh, services as we head towards the cross as we march into Jerusalem with Jesus. Um, make sure your family's prepped for the days ahead. This is this is vital that I, what I'm going to be talking about today, and I'm going to I'm going to expound on it as we preach. Okay. Um, and you guys can go ahead and look this up. I think it's Jonathan Kahn uh, that filmed a um, a gentleman that was calling a curse down on Israel and he ended up dying right there on the spot. Man, that's uh that's bad news. Uh don't don't you know make sure that these these people that are getting on board with this Palestinian thing and they're hating against Israel, don't don't make sure your kids aren't getting involved in that. Uh they're they're literally calling a curse down on themselves and I mean that. Um I mean it and we're gonna we're gonna get to it. So I'm, I'm helping your, this is time, uh, and want to say hello to Barb Sheehan and Roxanne Glady praying for your home situation. Yes, uh, Jeanette Atkinson, good morning to you. Um, it's important that you guys know the facts of the Bible and, and what's good and what's bad. Yes, yeah. And uh, let's see, today we're in Psalm and Deuteronomy. Um, but let me say this. Okay. Thank you for the shake last night. Shell Johns wants to say hello to you. Marcy Tolis, good morning to you. Thank you for the coffee. Yeah. Oops. Uh, but most of all, I want to thank my wife for the White Castle last night. That was good, wasn't it? We only eat White Castle. I told you we eat one time around Christmas. That's it. But my wife was, was leaving from wherever she was. She was down in Bridgeton. I said, if you go up the Rock Road and you see something good, it was still early in the day and I could still eat. Um, get me and Mike something. She said, all right, we'll go to White Castle. And, and uh, I got the chicken rings. I didn't eat them all and, and a handful of fries. The fries are pretty dang decent. They are. Well, you know, White Wait, Castle is good once. Yeah, I, I don't know. Does any? So my question is this. Does anybody legitimately eat White Castle or Jack in the Box? I, you know, I do when I think about it. I mean, how many times did you say you eat White Castle in a year? Oh man! Five, yeah. Five. yeah. Does five. anybody eat? Does anybody eat White Castle more than five times a year? If you're a drinker, you do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just can't. And I'm not bashing on White Castle. I, for sure, it has its place. You know, I think yeah. that if you like, I mean, I could eat a hamburger. I just, I just, it's not something I would. Their their coffee is the best. Mm. Their coffee, hands down, for. Fast food restaurant, White Castle's coffee is the best. So, mm. anyways, whatever. So, Chad Davis says it's all working fine. Let's see. Da, da, da. That's my mom. She's probably quick. All right. Uh, Marcy told us it's all working fine on my end. Let's see, Shannon Moody. All right. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, Jeannie Lauber. Uh, let's pray for her granddaughter, Alyssa, and what's going on there. Mike, will you lift uh, that young lady up in prayer? Yes, dearly, Father, we just ask that you lift these, this young lady up and for healing and physically, mentally, whatever kind of issues anyone's going through. Mm -hmm. We ask that you uh, give them comfort and strength and uh, let them feel your presence. In your precious name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. Uh, let me prop your phone up here a little bit, and uh, it'll help us see who's on the show. I want to say hello to Mary Ann P. Thank you for being on the show. Um, so I'm trying to think if we're going to dive right into it. Tim Staples says, I pray all of you 
with heartache and sorrow as well as those going through trials. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Chuck, for being on the show. Um, so let me know if you guys are those people who have White Castle more than a couple times a year. Hello, Gary Harden. Glad all of you are in in my life. Have a great day. We're glad you're in our life too. You and your wife and your kids is so awesome. So uh, let's talk about gardening because that's a hot topic right now. All right. I have turned over my garden. I am awaiting time to plant. I'm not going to do seeds. I'm just not. I'm not doing it. I'm going to plant plants. Is there anything I need to know? So I got manure in there. I got good soil in there. Probably ought to, you know, refresh it again. And and I got our fireplace ashes in there. Is there anything else you can think I can put in my garden for this year to make it? I don't know how you could get any more fruitful than what you had last year. You had a crop of tomatoes yep. and stuff. Yep. I mean, yep. you get what you got last year, you'll be doing fine. I mean, you was abundantly blessed. Sammy Ferguson's on the show, and Marianne Peace says White Castle in a great while. So, uh, Shannon, what he said, I love White Castle. Is there <laughs> anybody that eats it like every day? Huh? Yeah. Jody George says White Castle, uh, <laughs> if they were closer to me. So, uh, anyways, five to seven times, Jack, not. Not so much anymore. I don't know anybody that eats Jack in the Box. You know, uh, they have a breakfast sandwich all day long that was pretty good. But it's like anything else. You just got to go to the right one. Amen. All right, we're going to get into it. We're talking about your family, prepping your family out of Psalm 127. Mike, if you'd start us out, we're reading verses 1 through 3. Psalm 127. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchmen wake, but in vain. In vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he gives his beloved sheep. Yeah. Oh, children, are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the room is its reward. Yeah, we might as well do four and five. An arrow is in the hand of a mighty man. So are the children of the youth. The mighty man, Lord Jesus Christ. Heavy is man who has quivered full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with enemies in the gate. That great price that was paid at Calvary for all of us is the greatest gift. Of mankind. Of mankind. So here we go, talking about your families. And want to say a quick shout out. Uh, Gloria Lawrence said, thank you, Mike Senior, for having it on your page because she lost you there for a minute. Vicky said she really likes White Castle. <laughs> Jeannie said, I had White Castle yesterday and I'm praying for it. <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, Kelly Stanford says, I have seeds going double the size of my garden. Uh, Maybe I need to talk to Kelly about how to do dang seeds. Michael Tucker uh, is on the show. Uh, Charlene Stouter's on the show. She says, good morning, gentlemen. It was, ooh, Jack in the Box potato wedges. Does it, what? Jack in the Box has got potato wedges? You know, they they got a lot of stuff. I'd say uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, do now let me ask this: Does anybody eat white cat or uh, Jack in the Box more than once a year? And it's just because your friend goes. Do you want to do the two taco deal? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. And I'm not bagging on Jack in the Box either. It, it obviously has its place. You know, I think for young couples or uh, a young man that's a bachelor or something, you want to eat that kind of food. But yeah. my God, and I'm no food kind of sore by any means. But Lord help me. Yes, exactly. I remember back in the day when I was young, you know, I was lifting a lot. I eat, I would eat them uh, ultimate cheeseburgers. They're yeah. like three patties with cheese in between. <laughs> I mean, that thing probably had 2,000 calories in it. And I, I couldn't tell you the fat content in it. No, it's a... Uh... But I couldn't, eat, I couldn't eat that thing for nothing. Um, 
let's get into the scripture. Here we go. Talking about your family. He said, <clears throat> he said, and I'm reading out of King James along with Mike. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. All right. So your house, my house, all the work that you do, Mike, all the work that I do, and we're we're building a, a kid, you know, kids are building our wives and building our grandkids and do this and don't do that and all that kind of stuff. And you're continually doing it and you're continually frustrated and you're continually talking to your children and you're continually badgering them. Mm -hmm. If you're not building them in the Lord, God says that it's all in vain. Yeah, make more money. Yeah, buy bigger houses. Yeah, get nicer cars. Yeah, all this. That don't mean nothing. You're not building a house. The, the house that lasts and the house that's strong is one that's built on the firm foundation of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's where your story begins once you accept the Lord. I, I can't tell you what it's like to just continually work hard and not build your house, your family's house, on the firm foundation of Christ. I mean, right. you've probably made millions of dollars in your lifetime. If it wasn't for Christ, you may not have held on to any of it. Amen? Amen to that. Uh, all right, let's get into some comments here. We're talking about cheeseburgers. No, but like it when we do double cheeseburgers. Jessica Powell says, ooh, yeah, gardening. What a great idea of ashes. I'm using a file cabinet as raised bed. Cool. Uh, Vicky said, I used to eat Jack in the Box a lot. Service got really bad. Jeanette Brumley, or uh, Jeanette Eggerson says, yes, tacos and tacos. wedges. But let's be honest. I mean, are the tacos, they ain't meat, are they? I have no idea. But, you know, I, when you I, fry, I've eaten a Well, so has everybody. Anybody. But, I mean, you were probably in an altered state of... Well, that's why they give you all that different hot sauce, the fire sauce, and everything. So else. there's taste to it. You know, well, I you take the whole thing and they dunk it in the fryer. Yeah, lettuce and all. Uh, uh, pray for my family. We're under attack. Thanks. Let's pray for Gary. Lord, we just pray for my brother Gary, and uh, pray for uh, a sweet release of your Holy Spirit to guide him, pull him through the. Not hold the day in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Um, Charlene Stoddard said, "Oh yeah, Jack in the Box causes. Sometimes you just need grease." <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how we got on this. Uh, landlord's newborn great grandson in the NICU. Lord, we just pray for this grandson in the NICU and and uh, pray for healing in Jesus' name, Amen. Don't continue. Oh, let's see what Caitlin Scrimmis says. Caitlin Scrimmis says, "I'll eat those. Uh, I'll eat those Jack in the Crack tacos with ranch any day of the week." <laughs> yeah, you do I, them with and ranch. I, and I that hear fix a lot of stuff too. Huh? Ranch. You can baptize anything in ranch. Yeah. You know when somebody when the waitress asks you wherever you're at, you know we. I was eating with a, a friend of mine the uh, the other night, uh, Sunday night. I met him, a pastor friend uh, named Jason. We went out to Chili's out in Wentzville. Uh huh. And I got to be honest with you, I wasn't a Chili's fan, but I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna give it the thumbs up on Chili's. Well, we go to Chili's quite often. I wasn't a fan, but I'm 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 in the fan club. Anyways, this guy orders this this thing and this he orders a a, a soup bowl of ranch and dipping his burger in and eating it. And I was like, man, that's good. <laughs> uh, daughter keeps walking away from treat. Let's pray for uh, Marianne's daughter. Lord, we just pray for her daughter and that she just, uh, and she just gets the ultimate treatment that she, she cries out to you and, and is, and is delivered and, uh, and cleansed in thy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so, Let's let's do this. We all have had stories, and, and comment if, if you would, please, everybody, where you tried hard to get your family on track. Mm -hmm. You tried to get them on track from getting in trouble and, and, and not dating the wrong person, 
you know, keeping hold of their money and finding a new place to live, all those things. And you do this and you work hard and work hard and, it, and it's in vain mm -hmm. because you never invited God into the center of that life. Can you tell everybody just in a, in a short sentence, Mike, how important that is to build on the firm foundation of Jesus? Well, what I would suggest is that, uh, you know, Christ is going to be with you. And if you accept him, it'll Excuse be it. full eternity. And unlike your friends or your family who have passed, mm -hmm. Christ will never pass. He'll always be with you. Because, so when you die and your soul goes to heaven mm -hmm. or hell, I mean, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. So you need to just get that across. I mean, you know, you got up or down. That's, that's what they did. That's the way it was said when I was a kid. You know, you need to go up or down. Where you where you want to go? You never have, right? Yeah, that's pretty basic. Yeah, you want to go up or down. So, <laughs> and we all want to go up to heaven one day. So, yes. let's build our house on the foundation of Christ. So that's what it says in one one twenty seven one in Psalm. I want to say hello to Mark Wine. All right, let's keep going. We're going to try to get through. We got to get to Deuteronomy for sure. Keep going with me. One twenty seven two. It is in vain. I just talked about this. For you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved, his beloved sleep. And I think some versions, Mike, if I was to open up my ESV, it said, would say sweet sleep, I think. Um, yes. All right, number three. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So... Um, Aaron's uh, son, Brocky, got mm -hmm. an award. Uh, did, I showed you a picture probably yesterday when we were sitting in the Bible study room. And it's, it was like newcomer for basketball. You know, he's the youngest guy on the team. And I said, that's a great award and reward. He had a little medal around his mm -hmm. neck. And it was just kind of get. he got a reward or got an award. And it, and it was a reward for his uh, faithful service to the team. Here it says that the children are the reward mm -hmm. of basically of the parents. Yeah. And you're awarded uh, children, um, and they're a great reward to your family. Absolutely. When you look at your children, you look at Mikey, you look at Bree, and you look at your daughters, and you look at all your grandkids, those mm -hmm. are, those are and your, and your great-grandson and all that, those are great rewards of God that he's given to you. And when you look at those children, they're all uh, a blessing from the Lord. And, and they leave a heritage. And then four expounds on that. He said, they're like arrows in the hand of a mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're not just meant for battle. It just means your quiver is full of blessings. And Mike, you know that. Having right. the, the family that you have is is what a blessing they are. They are. The arrows, it says, God is building a spiritual house. Of sons, the mighty man is the Lord Jesus Christ. These sons love and energized by Him become more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. uh, Shannon Moody says, "I still try, but not <laughs> a lot of it's through prayer." Uh, the, and Charlene Stoddard says, "The Holy Spirit brings the lost back to to His own. Mm -hmm. Baptizing the faith is the rope of salvation. Is the hope of salvation? Believe it." Jessica Powell says, "Have Bible has been the best thing." in my life i thank you for enriching my life i don't know where i'd be yeah thank you jessica and thank god and we'd all we all believe that we believe that god has has blessed us john strain my buddy said good morning pat may our god, good lord keep blessing on you and we love having your mom here at our church she's she is a wonderful wonderful asset to the kingdom and i think john your mom's working in a new ministry right now if i if i've heard correctly i think she's helping aunt jen with some phone calls now uh, ba -ba 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 Chad Davis said, Mike Sr., our story begins when we accept the Lord. All Amen. right, let's go to five, then we're going to go. So Psalm 127, five, talk about it, then we're going straight over into Deuteronomy. And remember, if you're just getting on the show late, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, and you guys can pull it up. I think it's Jonathan Kahn, who's, uh, who, who does a lot with prophecy, shows on the internet there shows a guy that's calling uh, and i th and i think he's he's in turkey speaking out against israel and calling a curse down on israel and the guy dies right there live on on camera 
And when I get into Deuteronomy, Mike, I want I want everybody to take it serious. Because a lot of people are just thinking, well, those that kind of teaching is just for the nation of Israel, and that's just for the Old Testament. Here's the deal. You have to be, spiritually speaking, you have to be grafted into the kingdom of Israel in, in order to live in the New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. That means your spirit has to take on the very nature of God's chosen people. And you do that when you're adopted into the kingdom of God through the blood of Jesus. So that's yeah. something that's something everybody needs to know. So uh, so when you speak out against the nation of Israel, you're speaking out against God's people everywhere, whether you were or Gentile by birth, uh, you've been adopted uh, into the family uh, through the blood of Jesus as, as an Israelite. Happy is the man whose quiver is full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies at the gate. So you're going to be blessed when you have kids. You're going to be blessed when you have uh, grandkids. So all young people out there, don't be afraid to have kids. What happened to the days, Mike, when people had a lot of kids? What happened? Yeah. They ate less. <laughs> yeah. We need, we, need to, we, need to, we need to populate the earth. We need to have more children. We need to have mm -hmm. more children growing in Christ. We need to have more godly families. We need to have more godly churches. We need to have more people in the kingdom of God. That means the mommies and the daddies and the and the young people need to populate. Mm -hmm. Right? Hallelujah. Gloria says we stand with Israel. All right, Mike, we're going to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let her rip, tater chip. All right, we're going to 6, verse 1 through 9. Now, the, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgment which the Lord your God commanded you to teach you and that you might do them in the land where you go to possess. Okay, the big thing about that is obeying the law. I mean, if it's a commandment, you obey it, right? Mm -hmm. Number 2, that you might Fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your son, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Herefore, there, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily as the Lord God of your father has promised you in the land that flows with milk and honey. A heart of Israel, O oh Lord, our God is one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Mm -hmm. Quote it in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. Mm -hmm. Duties of the parents, and these words I will command you to this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in the house. When you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, the word of the God must be carried on. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be frontlets before your eyes. They took that literally. And number nine, and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gate. The word of God was ever... Before Israel. Amen. So I typed that up. Uh, and I can't, somebody was asking about this. Let's see who was asking. Uh, Charlene Stoddard said, can you, so the guy's named Jonathan Kahn. It's not spelled K. It's spelled C-A-H-N. And the, and the web or, or the address is the sign of the statue. And he goes on and talks about, uh, this and, and, and you guys will have to correct me. I think it was some guy from Turkey speaking out. I don't know. Maybe it was Turkish Parliament or something. He was he was calling down a curse on Israel and Israel's mm. people, and then he died right there on the spot. It's on video, um, guys. When when we get into the Old Testament, when we get into the Word of God, you need to handle the nation of Israel and God's people correctly in love don't mock him uh this is no time for games this this the palestinian 
people and and people standing for Hamas and standing against Israel, man, you're calling you're calling a curse down on your family. Uh, I've been teaching this, Mike, for years mm -hmm. about your family being built in the kingdom of God. Now is not the time to be playing games. It's not time to be a God mocker. It's time for God's it's time for God's church to grow and mm -hmm. build and and take watch this, Mike. Take a stand. Yeah. Get a backbone. Yeah, and stand surely. for Israel. Fly the flag. Yeah. Stand for Israel. Stand for God. Stand for things that are right. Stand for things that are correct. Stand for the family. Stand for the kingdom. Stand for his church, his bride. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's what Deuteronomy's talking about. And we'll break that down here in just a second. I want to go through the comments here. Let's see. Let's get through here. Let's get through here. Let's try it here. Uh, la, 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 Charlene's daughter. Okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. Brock is awesome. Thank you. Mary and Peace says on a positive note, Jennifer's daughter, Jaslyn, uh, and Zabion asked to come to church this week. I think that's what she said. Yeah, good for you, uh, Marianne. So keep bringing them to church. Okay, we stand with Israel. All right, let's get back to the study. Tim Staples says, this is buffering so much, still sticking with it. Yes, I support and pray for Israel. All right, it's sticking a little bit, but stay with us, guys. We got a good show. All right, let's get back to the teaching in, in Deuteronomy. Okay. This is, this is something that young kids in Israel have learned when they're young. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you the funny. All right. So my daughter's reading uh, reading her kids the Bible last night before they go to bed, same way I used to do with Keelan. And she's telling them the story about Joseph and talking about how her brothers threw him in the pit. Right, right. Well, uh, little Emery says, they're going to hell. So she <laughs> typed that up. I thought that was I thought that was cute. Uh, it was hilarious. I laughed out loud. It was right before we went to bed. And uh, I bet you did. That is, you know, you never know what a kid's going to say. No, but... you don't. But, man, it's great that she's teaching them the Word of God. Amen. Uh, Michael Tucker said it's an eye-opening video. Yeah. You think you're going to mess around with God? I just got to ask you that question right now. God will drop you like a sack of potatoes. He'll drop you like a bag of dirt. Yeah. You want to mess around with him. What do you think of these God mockers these days? This ain't, hey, let me tell you something. The signs are there. Say that with me, guys. The signs are there. Don't pull on Superman's cape. Don't spit in the wind and don't mess with God. Amen. Amen. Don't mess with God. Don't come out and, and be part of this, this woke agenda where you're, you're pushing Palestine and Hamas and acting like they're about something. They ain't, they ain't no nation going to stand against Israel. Mm -mm. Did you hear what I said? No nation going to stand with uh, stand against Israel. We're going to partner with them. We're going to stand with them. And we're going to trust God. Paul Hall said, I bet that guy was really shocked when he died. Well, yeah. Struck down. This is, this, is what, this is what used to happen back in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Somebody popped off. Say that with me. Somebody popped off. God struck him down. You know why? Because there wasn't a filter of grace back then. And it said, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back at the dang city of mess. You'll turn into a dang pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that mess? I think, it, uh, Sit I think there, we can get a lot in the Old Testament and can be thankful for the new covenant. You're sitting, sure. sitting there messing around, playing some kind of cockamamie game with God calling a curse down on mm -hmm. Israel. Are you serious right now? What way, guys? Let me tell you something. There ain't nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide when you want to act like some kind of bully and you're going to bully God and bully God's people. That dog don't hunt. Nope. Nope. You up there and shooting your mouth off like a like a Whatever. Crazy man. Crazy man, like a blowhard. 
you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Yeah. God's God's thrown open the windows of heaven. Not only is he raining a, a blessing down on his people, but he's going to take care of those who come after God's people. Here's what I'm telling you right now. In the United States of America, it's the Christian's turn to take back the land. You're right there. We better get, take it back. I mean, they're take, the, the enemy's been taking ground from the Christians forever. It's time for you to take your land back. Amen. All right, here we go. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments. I'm in Deuteronomy 6 1, which the Lord God commanded to teach you. You might do them in the land where you go to possess it. Uh, so Israel was commanded to take the land. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it took them a long time to do it, but that's another story. We are in the land. Spiritually speaking, we're in the United States of America where God deemed the United States to be free mm -hmm. so we could gain momentum, build his church, and, and go out all into the nations. Uh, it, it, he's going to be with us in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. On all points of the earth. Go out and make disciples. Verse 2. Deuteronomy 6, 2, that you might fear the Lord your God and to keep his statutes and his commandments. Fear the Lord. Don't be scaredy cat feared. Have reverent fear that you mm. don't open your mouth or your friends open their mouth and mock God. Don't mock him. Don't make fun of him. And don't use the Lord's name in vain. Absolutely. Guys, the... the Here's what I think. I think the I think the I think the honeymoon's over. Mm -hmm. Don't you? I mean, aren't yeah. you at the point in your life where you're looking at this now, going, obviously, God, God believes the honeymoon's over. It's it's go time. You know, it's kind of like in any marriage. And correct me if I'm wrong here. If I'm not, I'm not going out on a limb. In any marriage, God's church is married to Him. We're mm -hmm. His bride. The honeymoon phase is over. He's, he's been preaching to us for 2,000 years. And if you threw in Deuteronomy, it could be three or 4,000 years. Mm -hmm. Do this, don't do that. You, you, you were reading it, and, and, he, and I think he is, is the honeymoon phase is over, guys. We're in this marriage. He's, you know, and you've been, you've been married to Don a long time. After the honeymoon phase is over, you can get down to the nuts and bolts of your marriage. Now, let's raise our kids. Let's let's save a little money. Mm -hmm. Let's serve God and let's be good people. The the honeymoon phase is over. The honeymoon phase is you're going out and you're whining and dining and 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 you go to the restaurants and you go on the little vacations and all that. And the honeymoon phase and we're doing this and doing that. But after the honeymoon's over, you got to go back to work. She's yeah. got to go back to work. You raise your kids. You you go to church. You're an upstanding person in society, and you don't take any you don't take any guff from anybody. No. No, you're right. You think somebody's going to come messing around your house? Not around. Not your house. No. Nope. That means the honeymoon's over. It's we, you know, everybody came by to see you after the wedding, and they sent you flowers. That's over. After a while, it's over, and you got to get down to the to the brass tacks. I'd say something else, but I'm not going to. The honeymoon phase in the church, in my personal opinion, is is over. I'm just going to say, and I don't think I've, now I've told you guys for about the last year, I said I thought the water was this deep, mm -hmm. but I'm just telling you, I believe the honeymoon phase is over, and I, I'll go on record in saying that. I think God's getting ready to, to grab his bride and say, you know what, it's time that you start bringing the people in. Start telling, we got, we got a serious issue here. It's called sin, and you know what it creates? Lostness. Creates more. Darkness. Hmm. And if you can't get this here, we've already seen what happened in the Old Testament, how he right. dealt how he dealt with people. And then you got this poor guy that's up here uh, blas blaspheming the name of God publicly on a on a platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you call it what you want, but it's in the video. Well, <laughs> so you guys need to figure out if you're going to bring your. your and quit trying to be everybody's friend. 
be nice to people and love them, but don't try to be your your family's friend all the time. You're 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 a leader in your household. If you're watching this show, Mike Senior and Glory and all y'all and and Mike and Gary and all you all you everybody's on the phone uh, show, Caitlin. You guys are all leaders in your house. Your your goal is not to be your family's friend. You're to be a leader and 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 be a a, a role model. Uh, but I'd be careful thinking that you need to go around everywhere and and be somebody's pal. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's great to be nice to someone and uh, being kind to someone, but you don't want to enable them. No. Oh, don't even get me started on that. You just sit there and enable a bunch, a bunch <laughs> of people that don't want to do any dang thing. Jeannie saw the video. Eating family's on the show. Oh, hello to you, Nikki and Aaron Eaton. All right. Preach it, Roxanne Gladys says. Gary, sending prayers for... Uh, bum, 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 bum. Carrie Olmus says, Gary Harden, you are in my prayer, my brother. Gloria said, Amen. Paul, okay, we've seen them comments, guys. Thank you. Keep them coming. Um, let me read a little bit more. We got, we got 10 minutes, guys. Here we go. Mike, hear there, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may go well with you. Hear what he said? It may go well with you, and that you may increasingly increase mightily. As the Lord God of your fathers has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey. Stop for a second. This isn't just a, Mike, this isn't just a mm-hmm. physical land. This is a spiritual land, too. Yes, Donna Sadrowski said, unfortunately, the live stream is buffeting badly. Have a great day, all. All right, God bless you. Thank you for being on the show. Um, here's what I'll say to this. God is going to have you increase mightily if you stay in his graces and you follow his commands he would rather have obedience than sacrifice i was reading that this morning really? um on proverbs uh chapter whatever the date is 21 today proverbs chapter 21 it tells you in there that i would rather have obedience than sacrifice mm-hmm. so what does that mean so you know, if you're looking at it through Old Testament lens, they had to continually bring sacrifice for their sin. Well, how about this? If you didn't sin, you wouldn't have to bring so many sacrifices. So he would rather you be obedient to his commandments. Right. So don't come to me with a bunch of sorries every time. What what would you do when you're breaking an apprentice? And, sorry, I cracked that marble. Sorry, I cracked that tub. Sorry, I messed up the mud. Sorry, I lost your tool. What are I you going to say? Uh, I won't be sorry when I fire you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> how, I mean, how many times? How many times does he, he come up and go tell you sorry? He dented your truck when he got yeah. the ladder out, broke the window, <clears throat> came in stomping all over your your stuff. Yeah, but he said he was sorry. What does mm-hmm. that get you? That and a quarter gets you a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Amen. You can. Uh, it's nice to be sorry, but you know you got to kind of get past that. You know, just do better. You know? A- ask me this: How about grow up? Yeah, that's a good way. Yeah. You know, here's up. what I tell everybody: If you want to know the secret to build in your house on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, show up to church every week. Yeah. Just show up every week, and you say, "Is there something magical, supernatural?" Uh, in, in 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 God's church, and I would say absolutely. Yeah, it'll it'll change your life. You can't walk into God's church where the Holy Spirit dwells and the Word is being preached, and your life not be changed. You know that's the truth. You know you just get in there, get some seed, and you know you can, uh, have a reference to it the whole week. Yeah, you can start the week off with positive. Start the week off with the word. Word of God. She said, read Exodus. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one to read too. All right, let's keep going. We, we're going to take we're going to take four more minutes, guys. Stay with us. This is easy. This is low hanging fruit. Everybody knows land flowing with milk and honey. Hero Israel, the Lord God is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Uh, and, and obviously Jesus quoted these back in Matthew chapter 22. In these words I've commanded you this day, be in your heart. 
and you shall teach them. Here's what I want to say, Mike. I got to I got to put a highlight here. I got to put an asterisk here. What does it say? And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise up. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your kids want to sit down and put their iPad down. Yeah. You That's... sit down with them anyway. Put your iPad down. We're getting ready to go to bed. We're going to take 15 minutes out. We're going to do a devotion. We're going to talk about God. We're going to pray. And you're going to go to bed. How about this? How about uh, we need to... Uh, the Word of God must be your main criteria. Huh? Well, he needs to be the center of your life. That's for sure. And just think about this for just a second. And let me ask you this. When they took when they took Christ out of the schools, mm -hmm. that welcomed Satan in. When they took the, the Bibles out of the school, they started bringing pornographic material into the schools. Mm -hmm. They started bringing transgender stuff into the schools. They started bringing the LGBT way of life into schools. They started getting rid of saying the Pledge of Allegiance. They started getting away from uh, the Constitution of the United States. They started getting away from teaching history. You told me that years ago. They don't They don't want to teach about all the wars. No. They don't want to tell you about World War One, World War Two. They don't want to talk to you about uh, Vietnam or, or, or the Gulf War. Mm. They don't want to talk about Afghanistan and Iraq. But what the reason they don't want to tell you that is because you know that in order to have freedom, sometimes mm -hmm. you got to fight for it. Maybe. It's not free. I, yes, you're right. What do you think of that? I think. Uh, I mean, you got yeah, a lot you of. Know what? You I, got a I, lot I, of. I seen something on Facebook that said something like. Uh, you uh, don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion, so I'll always upset somebody when you go to their house. Anybody ever tell you that? Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, all the time. Why, you know what? I want to talk about politics. I want to talk about religion. Well, well, well I tell them, I said, don't invite me over then. <laughs> don't invite me over. That's all. I'll be, I'll be straight about it. And I'm not going to come in and ruin anybody's time. No. But if you ask my opinion, I'm not going to soft pedal it. I mean... For heaven's sakes, when I show up at your house, you ought to know my stance on Israel. You ought to know that I only vote pro-life. Uh, you ought to know that I follow the Bible. You ought to know that I don't back down. You ought to know that I love Jesus. You ought to know that I, I wave the flag. You ought to know that I fly the flag at my house and my farm. You ought to know that I like traditional family values. You ought to know that I like cowboys. You ought to know that uh, I'm not big on... Uh, woke agenda or or any progressive uh, hatred. There's Michael Tucker. Michael Tucker says, it all changed when I finally made the decision to make my church a priority. Yeah. <laughs> I wish Michael Tucker would come in and preach that everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, we need to preach Church has got to be a priority and, and it's no secret. It just in this building that I'm in. Yeah. If you you know it was resurrected, what did they say? Seventy four on the door there, or something yeah. like that. That wasn't it. Wasn't even a thought about mm. was you at church. Mm. There was because there was nothing open. Everything was shut down. Everybody knew you need to go to church. I'm not going for your benefit. I'm going for my benefit. And then when you go and I go, we all benefit together. Yeah. I but I have a personal responsibility to have my family in church. You're absolutely right. I remember going to Sunday school there. The drugstore would be closed. The little market was closed. There's no need for it. Not, nothing Go home open. and you fix a dinner. I mean, I, you know what? You're right. Well, the ice cream shops would open later on in the day. Later on in the day after everybody went to church. Yeah, kind of like they do now after church. Some people go out and have a little breakfast or yeah. coffee. Well, let, me, let me tell you something. Michael Tucker's probably got the wisest words I've heard for the show today. He said, it all changed when I finally made the decision to make church a priority. Yeah. That's, a, that's the truest words I think I've ever heard on the show. Well, 
I guess we'll leave it there. Michael Tucker coined the phrase today, make church a priority, then your life will change. Yes, it will. How about that? I think you're absolutely right. Pray us out of here, will you, sir? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here to spread your word and gospel. We just love you so much. We want others to love you and increase their relationship with you as we teach our children and our loved ones about you. Have a great day in the Lord, and uh, be kind. In Jesus' name, amen.